Welcome to Bridges. I'm Monica Schmelter. I'm so glad that you could join us today. You know, April 20th, 1999 marks a tragedy for this nation of the Columbine High School shooting. And today we're going to meet the mom of a young woman, Rachel Joy Scott, who was martyred for her faith on that day. And we're going to hear Rachel's story from her mother's heart. And I want to welcome you today to Bridges. Betha, it's so nice to meet you and have you here. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. And, you know, I know that so many of us, of course, we remember the news from the day of the mm -hmm. Columbine High School shooting and the tragedy, and we heard bits and pieces about some of the students. But as I understand it, your daughter, Rachel, who was 17, was martyred for her faith that day. She was. Um, the shooters knew Rachel. They had even put her on their target list because mm -hmm. uh, they created a list of people. They didn't go looking for her, of course, but when they saw her in the line of fire, um, they approached her, they challenged her for her faith, and Rachel died declaring her faith and love for the Lord. Mm -hmm. and you know, that's a story that some of us heard some things about. But it's a story as a mom and for your family, obviously, that has great impact. And now, as I understand it, you're sharing that story even in a film that's being made about Rachel's life. We are. Uh, uh, we're filming a, a film right here in Nashville mm -hmm. that's uh, called I'm Not Ashamed, the Rachel Joy Scott story that's going to air actually on the 17th anniversary of the shooting, which is April the 20th, 90, or 2016. But we're not really telling the actual shooting part of the story. What we're doing is we're sharing Rachel's life. Mm -hmm. What we found out after she was gone, that she, the Lord had been prompting her and using her in very prophetic ways. She left journals and writings and drawings that not only indicated that she was going to die at a young age, but also talked about what kids are going through, what's happening at schools, uh, how Christian kids especially feel trying to live their faith mm -hmm. in front of classmates. And so um, it was a, an awakening. Mm -hmm. It was a real awakening to the needs of our children in their schools. Rachel wrote about so many things. Um, her heart was always to reach the lost. She wanted to impact. She wrote, uh, she showed her hands on the back of a dresser when she was smaller and it just said, someday these are the hands of Rachel Joy Scott and someday they will touch millions of people's hearts. And she's so right because yes. she's touching hearts even today and will continue to do so with her life and her mm -hmm. legacy. And as you said, you know, we're not going to focus today on the shooting. We've heard right. about the shooting and the horrific tragedy, but really, as I understand it from you, you learned a lot about those last moment of Rachel's life and through her journals, her thoughts and really those prophetic unctions that she wouldn't live a long life and, and right. those things. And so, uh, as I understand it, you found out really from a witness at the scene that Rachel stayed true to her faith despite having been shot already a couple of times. She was. She was shot twice at a distance before the boys approached her. Um, and she was with a young man who lived. And he's the one that gave us the story of those final moments uh, about how they came up to her, they put a gun to her temple and mocked her for her faith, asked her if she still believed in God. And when she said, you know that I do, her shooter said, well then, go be with him. And he pulled the trigger. And I believe with all my heart, Rachel went from the face of evil right into the presence of the Lord. Amen. You know, in that exact moment. Um, that in itself is a wonderful story and was something to share. But when we started finding the writings and the drawings, we knew that this was something that came straight from the heart of the Lord. He prepared her just like the shooters had prepared for one whole year, uh, writing journals. They wanted to start a chain reaction. They want to do a lot. I mean, the similarities were, uh, weren't qu coincidental. Right. They were very deliberate and purposeful, the difference between life and death, light and darkness. Mm -hmm. And so um, once we saw that, we knew this was a story God had given us. It had to be told and shared. Now we get the opportunity to do it on a, on a big screen. Absolutely. <laughs> For everybody to know, because I think, yes. you know, it's, it's a horrific tragedy, and, and yes. we all know that and agree with that. And yet at the same time, I see the goodness and the faithfulness of God 
yes. even as we hear from your heart, that you can see how God did prepare Rachel. She he had did. that unction to know. And so tell me what that meant to you when you were able to read in her journals and see what your sweet daughter was going through and the things that God was impressing on her heart. Well, it took me off guard at first. Sure. You can, uh, I, I didn't realize Rachel was so private and I believe the Lord protected all those things because nobody could influence him or interrupt what he and Rachel had, you mm -hmm. know, that relationship that the Lord had with Rachel and she had with him. When she wasn't quite seven years old, her father had left a home and she found out at a young age that she had a heavenly father. Mm -hmm. She started writing to him <laughs> letters like you would write a dad. Sure. She talked, she called him father, uh, and I think that became her safe place mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. things were hard. And with divorced families, that does happen so, so much. And um, so that was her safe place and her refuge. It was her hiding place. And um, found out through these writings, God was, I believe, letting allowing Rachel to carry like a burden for her generation. Mm -hmm. Because what she's writing in some of these, I think are in a proxy. Mm -hmm. She's crying out for a generation, trying to find out what's real, what the purpose of life is, mm -hmm. and, and um, talking about death and things. Um, one of her writings, and I'll just share real quick with Certainly, you. Certainly, yes. One of the darker writings <laughs> um, that didn't come from her own personality or her own place, but came, I think, from the heart of the Father. She writes, it, we call it the drowning poem. I'm drowning in my own lake of despair. I'm choking, my hands wrapped around my neck. I'm dying, quickly my soul leaves, slowly my body withers. But it isn't suicide, I can consider it homicide. The world you have created has led to my death. She wrote that two weeks, Monica, before she was killed. Mm. I think that was a cry, a generational cry mm -hmm. to the heart of a world saying, I'm, I'm telling you, our children are dying for very sad and stupid and wrong reasons mm -hmm. and they don't know what life is about. They don't know that there's purpose and destiny. They don't know the love of a heavenly father and sometimes even an earthly father. Mm -hmm. And they're, they feel like life has no value and it's not worth living. And what we're giving our children is literally killing them. Mm. The culture that they live in is literally choking the life out of them. Mm. When you start reading things like that from somebody 17, mm. 16, 17 years old, it's like, God, there's so much more here that we need to understand and we need to address. And so as a mother, I began to search out what was happening. I want to reach this generation of young people for for the Lord. Yes. And so as a mom, because we're sharing from your heart today, mm -hmm. I just can't imagine what it would be like to read that kind of writing and to know that your sweet daughter was going through all of that. It was, it was very hurtful. Mm -hmm. uh, as a Christian mother, I thought I was meeting the needs of my children. Mm -hmm. And when I find out Rachel's having um, these uh, feelings and she's pinning them. She's putting them down because on April the 20th of 1998, exactly one year to the date of the shooting, she writes, I am not going to apologize for speaking the name of Jesus. I'm not going to hide the light that God has put into me. If I have to sacrifice everything, I will. I will take it. And she talks about losing all of her friends at school and how they turned their back on her. Then Two weeks after that writing, she writes, this will be my last year, Lord. I've gotten what I can. Thank you. So as a mom, when I'm starting to see these things, mm -hmm. I am crushed and broken to think I didn't know. I couldn't comfort her. I couldn't do anything. But I think God was like, no, Beth, I can't let you know that because you're going to interrupt right. what I'm trying to do here. Mm -hmm. You're going to, you know, you're going to stop what's happening because he was preparing her. He was. And I, I can <laughs> see that. I, you know, I can see that from our Heavenly Father's perspective. And yet at the same time as a mom, I, I would want to intervene. Yes. <laughs> I would almost feel frustrated with God, like, couldn't you like let me know? Well, and that's exactly how I felt. Yeah. I, I almost was angry uh -huh. that, that I didn't have, I wasn't in that loop. Yeah. <laughs> that God loop of Rachel and God talking and, yes. and you know, going through these things. Um, it, it frustrated me and then, and then the more I read, the more comfort I got for, 
from thinking it wasn't just Rachel. She That's was right. crying out for a generation. Mm -hmm. She wasn't suicidal. No. She wasn't depressed. All of the things that you would associate mm -hmm. with those types of writings, mm -hmm. they didn't exist in her life. She was sparkly, wonderful, bubbly, outgoing. So it wasn't a it wasn't a characterization of her. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, even if even if we just look at what she did in the last moments of her life. Yes. I mean, a person that was sorrowful and scared and intimidated and, and depressed wouldn't be able to say, you know I believe in God. Right. I mean, we're talking about one very strong, determined young lady who, you know, at 17, your friends are your whole world. They are. They are. Um, they become your sounding board for everything. And she had just written how, how much walking her talk cost her. Yes. It cost her something to walk her talk. Yes. Um, and she was still like, well, I'm sorry, that, but if, that has, if that's what it takes for me to be with my best friend Jesus, then that's fine with me. Yeah. She writes that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. I don't know of many adults oh. who are willing to take whatever it takes to, to have that right. kind of relationship with the Lord, let alone a, a young person. So the Lord was obviously not only given her strength and courage, but he was he was be so real to her Amen. that it was that there was no question in her mind of yeah. if she faced that, she made that decision the year before she mm -hmm. faced the gun. And um, I, I, I appreciate, I've been very hum humbled by this, Monica. I'm sure. It's okay. It would <laughs> it's be. very humbling yes. too, to know that I had a daughter that strong. And would I be able to keep pace with that? Would I, would I be that strong faced knowing I'd already taken two bullets, having a gun to my temple? Mm -hmm. uh, not wanting to say something on my defense. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She did not defend her life. Right. She willingly laid it down. She did. She did. And I, people ask me, are you proud? I, and I'm like, no, I'm, I'm very humbled. Yes. I'm very humbled. God gave me this little girl and God put it in her heart and her spirit that she had resolved. I'd be, I'd be willing to take a bullet from mm -hmm. the Lord. Yeah. And I truly believe only the Lord could prepare her and yeah. bring her to that place. We've got to take a break. We want you to stay with us today on Bridges. When we come back, we're going to hear more about Rachel's story from her mother's heart. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, write to the address on the screen. Call 615-754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. Log on to www.ctntv.org where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on Bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org. You can purchase a copy of today's show for $15. Call us at 615-754-0039 or send a check to the address on the screen. Please mention the program number on the screen. If you are just joining us today on Bridges, we are talking about Rachel Joy Scott, who was martyred for her faith in the Columbine shooting when she was just 17 years old. Her mother is here and joining us today, telling us her story from a mother's heart. And Beth, we've been talking about really how, you know, God supernaturally prepared your daughter. Yes, he did. To really willingly lay down her life, to not be ashamed, even after being shot twice, to, t to knowingly take that third bullet by mm -hmm. not denying, mm -hmm. by refusing to say that she did not believe in God. And then all of this unfolds to you and as a mother and, and her other siblings, as I understand you have five children. I do. Rachel all, is the middle. You all have to go through this grief and process bit by bit what God had prepared Rachel for. What has that been like, you know, for you as a mom and for her brothers and sisters? Well, Monica, what a lot of people don't understand, I had two children in the line of fire that day. Mm -hmm. And so for the first year, my son was in the library and that Craig, he witnessed 10 kids being killed, 
two boys on either side of him were killed and God spared his life, but it left him a shell of a person. So immediately, my first concern uh, is I, the grief was so heavy of course. about Rachel, but I also had to be there for Craig. You know, and so um, even though we started finding things right away and, and speaking opportunities, you know, evolved, uh, my first priority was my son, mm -hmm. and I had to quit full-time work and go back to being a full-time mother uh, to minister to him and be there for him because he was only 16 when that happened, and he wasn't prepared for war. Of course and that's not. Exact, well, he that's was just was. going to school. Yes, and that that day God did spare his life. Um, I believe when the boys saw he was with two friends between a table. Uh, they shot and killed one, passed over him, shot and killed the other. God totally preserved him, but what was gonna take to overcome what he went through uh, was gonna take a long-term healing. Yes. And so uh, our family was kinda hit from both sides. Mm -hmm. We had a victor, victim and a survivor. Yes. And really and truly, um, in some ways, Craig has suffered so much more because of uh, what he witnessed that day. Mm -hmm. But God used him, just like God used Rachel in Amen. the aftermath. God used Craig, and when he was laying there, experiencing all of this, he prayed, and he asked God to take away his fear and give him courage, which Amen. the Lord did. And the Lord told him, get up, get out, and take everybody you can with you. So he actually was instrumental in leading kids out of that library to safety, because those boys would come back in there. Mm -hmm. So um, we've got two dynamics going yeah. here. Uh, what Rachel left now is a, 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 a story of um, heroism. Yes. <laughs> what we've got with Craig is a story of uh, surviving you know, in survival and how how God gets you through the pain of witnessing something that horrific. So my role as a mother kind of took um, a double role. Yeah. Um, I was trying to grieve Rachel and be strong for Craig and be there for him. Mm -hmm. um, and Craig was grieving his sister. He was. And, and grieving the war zone and thank God he had the courage to obey the voice of the Lord, get up and lead the other students out of there. Yes. But people don't realize sometimes that a traumatic event like that is not just a day. It goes on for a long time. And what I hear you saying as a mom, <coughs> you know, you're grieving Rachel. You're trying to take care of your other children, and then you've got this one that, thank you, Jesus survived. Right. But to help him to get from being a survivor uh, to being able to live life and yes. enjoy life again. And, and, you know, at 16 years old, to have this one and this one and your sister. I, it, it was horrible, Monica. I, I can't even explain to you what those days were like. Mm. They were so dark. And I know God was there, and I yes. know His grace got us through it. You know, you think you're gonna die, but mm -hmm. you don't, you yeah. can't. <laughs> yeah. You have to live. And um, I know Craig, he suffered survivor's guilt. He suffered PTSD. He still can have those trigger points even today, mm -hmm. 16 years later, that torment, the enemy, you know, brings those memories back. Of course. Um, and yet at the same time, God has done a, a tremendous work mm -hmm. of healing in his life. He has been a national speaker. He's been on the platform sharing his story. And, and people can see that through the brokenness, even that, God has been faithful. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to give thanks for. There's a lot I would never <laughs> imagine going through again yeah. at any level. Absolutely. But um, God had purpose even for both. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I do. Rachel's, Rachel's story is one to encourage people um, that you can be in the eye of the storm and face death and and have a peace. Mm -hmm. And I believe Rachel did have peace. Yes, amen. I believe God gave her oh, peace at that moment. I believe the grace of God had to absolutely cover her and, and yeah. just absolutely receive, receive her in those moments. I think so. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I, yeah. God, you know, this came straight from the heart of the enemy. Absolutely. But it didn't take God off guard. No. <laughs> it didn't throw him any curves. He knew what was in the enemy's plan mm -hmm. from the beginning to the end. And um, I think 
the moment of darkness had its moment, and now it's time for the light to shine. Amen. And this is what we're trying to do by sharing the story of Rachel, mm -hmm. is um, showing how God intended the very worst the enemy had to offer that day and how he uses anything yes. that comes his way and how he maybe have overplayed his hand <laughs> uh, by, by taking Rachel out yes. because um, now millions of people are going to, I believe, pick up um, the mantle yes. uh, or the, the fallen torch, whatever you want to call it. Rachel wrote in one of her writings, she writes, I'm not a beer chug and pot tripping drug dealing Christian. I'm a God loving Satan slam Jesus freaking Christian. I am a warrior for Christ. Amen. So we are calling arms <laughs> for warriors. <laughs> you know, we want a whole army. You take out one, we come back with millions. You know, <laughs> uh, we multiply that voice and that heartbeat of calling forth a generation of young people that know what it is to stand firm and strong for the, their faith. Yes. not apologizing for it, not being intimidated, not trying to be politically correct. Mm -hmm. You just know who you are in Christ and you're unashamed. That's right. And uh, that's, that's the battle cry that yes. we're proclaiming now. You know, and to really understand that, you know, as we say all that and as that we believe all of that, that, you know, God does not promise that we won't be persecuted oh, no. for our faith. And I know a lot of us would look at Rachel's story and at your son and the, what the other students went through, and we wonder, well, how, how could God let that happen? I mean, she believed in the Lord, and yet her story is still of one that, even though it didn't work out on this side of the equation, right. the way <laughs> any of us would have wanted, you right. know. Right. God is still God, and mm -hmm. you still sense His graciousness and His faithfulness in spite of all that. That's a testimony. It is, and I, I have come to believe God raises up people mm -hmm. for specific points of time. I do too. And Rachel had God's mark on her. Mm -hmm. I knew when she was born that there, God gave me the understanding that she was a special child. Of course, I never interpreted that to be a short of life. Of course not. <laughs> but uh, God God has people for seasons. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there's a voice crying in the wilderness or what, however you want to mm -hmm. determine what that looks like or sounds like. Mm -hmm. There are people that come into a, a, a season and they fulfill what God's purpose and destiny was and God allows them then to, to be removed from that point. Mm -hmm. You know, and I believe Rachel was one of those generational voices yes. and people that God said, I've got purpose and destiny. It won't look and sound like what you think it might look and sound mm -hmm. like, but it will, it will fulfill my purposes through you. Amen. Amen. And God is faithful to do that. Was there ever a moment in your mother's heart that you just wished that she would have given a different answer? <laughs> Monica, I've had this conversation with the Lord so many times. Yes. If he had told me, Beth, I'm gonna take two of your children. I'm gonna put them in the worst school shooting ever imaginable. One is gonna live, one is gonna die. But, but it's okay because I'm gonna use it for my purposes. Mm -hmm. I would have argued with God all day long yeah. and said, God, I know mm -hmm. we need as a church to be awakened. I know as a culture we need to be awakened, as a, a yes. nation we need to be awakened, mm -hmm. but God, I don't give you permission to use my two children. You've gotta choose somebody else. Mm -hmm. I would have begged him. I would have offered myself. I would have mm -hmm. done anything possible mm -hmm. to avert that situation. That's why God didn't let me know, because I would have been in <laughs> <Exactly>. his face. <laughs> exactly. Saying, hey, you and I got to work this out, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. And the, the only reason I ask you that is I think it can be so easy to watch somebody tell their story and just think, well, you know, it's very easy for her. She sees that God had a very special purpose for Rachel Joyce God and that she's a warrior for Christ. And you get all of that. I do. And at the same time, you're a mom just like any of the yeah. rest of us, and we would fight to our death for our children. We would. Yeah. We would. I, I, um, I never, you never put your children in the line of fire. Never. For anything. Ever. Your job is we to nurture. We would be there. Yeah. Yes. You nurture, you protect, you guard, you, you hold them close and safe. Mm -hmm. So you never, you never put them in, in front of the lion, you know, mm -hmm. the, the enemy's face. Uh, right. But it did happen. Mm -hmm. It did happen, and I have to reconcile that God, if He says, I won't give you more than you can bear, then mm -hmm. He must 
think that I can bear this. Right, and he's helping you. And he and, is. And so now there is this movie that we're that that you're making to tell Rachel's story and yes. to encourage us all to be the warriors that we need to be. Yes. You know, Rachel's story has impacted your whole life and your other children. Mm -hmm. How are you all processing through now? Well, every year gets better. It gets better, but. God gave us purpose and direction. Amen. I mean, we've all championed whatever was in our heart that to take whatever piece of Rachel that was. We've championed that uh, in many different ways. And um, you know, you, t you take the greatest pain and if you can turn that around mm -hmm. and make it work for good for yourself or someone else, there's healing in that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the Lord suffered our pain for our healing. That's and, right. And, and so you just use that example and say, okay, God, I need to channel this for godly purposes. And help me to see what those are and help me be faithful to commit to that. Yeah. And I'm sure you all have good days and not oh, so good days. Oh, my goodness. Today's Rachel's 34th end of birthday. Mm -hmm. So it's a bittersweet day. Yes. You know, uh, one of the things I tell people, though, Monica, and I believe it with all my heart, and I tell this to mothers anytime I get a chance to speak, is that I lived with greatness and I never knew it. Yeah. God puts greatness in our lives all yes, the time. He does. We're created in His greatness. Amen. And yet so many times we don't see greatness yeah. in the lives of our children, in what we do. And God says, but you were born out of greatness. Amen. Amen. You were born. And we need to open our yes. eyes and see it. We are out of time, but I want to thank you so much for coming. Thank you, and Monica. And for sharing your heart with us today. We are out of time. We've got to go. But we say goodbye, and God bless you. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. If you would like to contact WHTN, you can write to the address on the screen or call us at 615-754-0039 or visit us on the web at www.ctntv.org. Would you like to be a live audience member on Bridges with Monica Schmelter? Visit ctntv.org to book your spot. Do you have a ministry or business? You can contact Nashville's WHTN for studio and programming rates. Visit ctntv.org slash studio or call 615-754-0039 for more details. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, write to the address on the screen. Call 615-754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org.